Why does the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict remain overlooked by the media? The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is a deeply rooted ethnic and territorial dispute between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the Nagorno-Karabakh region, which was predominantly inhabited by ethnic Armenians until 2023. This region, along with seven surrounding districts, was originally home to a significant Azerbaijani population until their expulsion during the 1990s. The Nagorno-Karabakh area has been claimed and partially controlled by the breakaway Republic of Artsakh, yet it is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan. Since 2020, Azerbaijan has gradually re-established control over Nagorno-Karabakh and the surrounding districts. During the Soviet era, Armenians in the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast experienced discrimination and suppression of their culture and identity by the Soviet Azerbaijani authorities. They were pressured to leave the region, while Azerbaijanis were encouraged to settle there. Even though Armenians remained the majority population, the tensions escalated in the late 1980s, leading to a 1988 Nagorno-Karabakh referendum aimed at transferring the region to Soviet Armenia based on self-determination principles in the Soviet constitution. This referendum triggered a series of violent events, including pogroms against Armenians and Azerbaijan. The conflict turned into a full-scale war in the early 1990s following the Soviet Union's dissolution. The war was eventually won by Artsakh and Armenia, resulting in the occupation of regions surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh. This period witnessed the expulsion of ethnic Armenians from Azerbaijan and ethnic Azerbaijanis from Armenia and Armenian-controlled areas. In 1993, the United Nations Security Council passed four resolutions supporting Azerbaijan's territorial integrity and calling for the immediate withdrawal of Armenian forces from Azerbaijani territories. A ceasefire, signed in Bishkek in 1994, led to two decades of relative stability, which began to deteriorate significantly in the 2010s. An escalation in April 2016 resulted in casualties and minor changes to the front line. In 2017, it was revealed that Azerbaijan had organized a large-scale money laundering scheme known as the Azerbaijani Laundromat, amassing a slush fund of 2.9 billion US dollars used for influencing politicians, journalists, lawmakers, and academics to promote Azerbaijani interests abroad, including their stance on the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. This practice was referred to as caviar diplomacy. In late 2020, the Second Nagorno-Karabakh War erupted, leading to thousands of casualties and a significant Azerbaijani victory. An armistice was established through a tripartite ceasefire agreement on November 10, resulting in Azerbaijan regaining all the occupied territories surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh and capturing one-third of Nagorno-Karabakh itself. Ceasefire violations continued in Nagorno-Karabakh and on the Armenian-Azerbaijani border following the 2020 war. In December 2022, Azerbaijan imposed a blockade on Artsakh and initiated a large-scale military offensive in September 2023, culminating in the surrender of the Artsakh authorities. Artsakh is expected to dissolve by January 1, 2024. The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict remains a complex and deeply rooted issue, with significant consequences for the affected populations. It underscores the importance of diplomatic efforts, security guarantees, and international mediation to address the underlying causes and work towards lasting peace in the region. Historical Background The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is deeply rooted in the historical complexities of the South Caucasus region. It emerged following the collapse of the Russian Empire, as Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh established an unrecognized polity known as the Karabakh Council in 1918. This move was prompted by the broader reshaping of national boundaries and the quest for self-determination. However, the political landscape was far from stable. Due to the pressures of Azerbaijani and British authorities, the Karabakh Council reluctantly acknowledged the authority of Azerbaijan in August 1919, albeit on a provisional basis. The final determination of international borders within the South Caucasus was deferred to the Paris Peace Conference, adding uncertainty to the region's future. In early 1920, the Azerbaijani governor-general Khosrov Bey Sultanov issued a compelling ultimatum to the Armenians of Karabakh, demanding their permanent integration into Azerbaijan. The reaction to this ultimatum was not passive compliance, but a desperate attempt to resist Azerbaijani rule. Unfortunately, this rebellion failed, 
leading to a tragic massacre and the forced displacement of Shush's Armenian population. By 1921, Soviet authorities had gained control over Nagorno-Karabakh, subsequently establishing the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast in Ko within Soviet Azerbaijan. The territorial status of Nagorno-Karabakh was thus determined, at least in the context of Soviet governance. The Soviet period was marked by significant hardships for the Armenian population in the NKO. Discrimination, cultural suppression, and a campaign to encourage Armenians to leave the region were common. Simultaneously, Azerbaijanis from other parts of Soviet Azerbaijan were encouraged to settle in Nagorno-Karabakh, despite Armenians maintaining their majority even as the USSR disintegrated. The tensions escalated further in 1988 when Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh, reacting to perceived economic mismanagement by Azerbaijan, held a referendum seeking to unite with Soviet Armenia. This move was grounded in the principles of self-determination outlined in the Soviet Constitution. In response, a series of violent pogroms were carried out against Armenians across Azerbaijan, setting the stage for the onset of the Nagorno-Karabakh War. The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict's origins are multifaceted, encompassing questions of self-determination, territorial integrity, and the complex legacy of the Soviet Union's dissolution. It is a testament to the intricate interplay of historical forces that continue to shape the region's dynamics. The First Nagorno-Karabakh War, 1988-1994 Unraveling a Complex Conflict The First Nagorno-Karabakh War also referred to as the Artsakh Liberation War in Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh, was a protracted armed conflict that spanned from the late 1980s to May 1994. This devastating war unfolded in the enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh, located in southwestern Azerbaijan, and involved the majority ethnic Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh, supported by the Republic of Armenia. Clashing with the Republic of Azerbaijan, both Armenia and Azerbaijan, as former Soviet republics, became deeply embroiled in this undeclared conflict, which predominantly occurred in the mountainous heights of Karabakh as Azerbaijan sought to suppress the secessionist movement in Nagorno-Karabakh. The roots of the conflict can be traced to February 20, 1988, when the enclave's parliament voted to unite with Armenia. This demand for unification, which had its origins in the late 1980s, began relatively peacefully. However, as the dissolution of the Soviet Union loomed, tensions escalated into a violent conflict between ethnic Armenians and ethnic Azerbaijanis. Both sides accused each other of ethnic cleansing and conducted pogroms, resulting in significant human suffering. The disintegration of the Soviet Union provided fertile ground for an Armenian separatist movement in Soviet Azerbaijan. The eventual declaration of secession from Azerbaijan marked the culmination of a territorial dispute over the land. Following Azerbaijan's declaration of independence from the Soviet Union and the subsequent dismantling of the enclave's government, the Armenian majority voted in favor of secession in a 1991 referendum. This referendum, which was boycotted by the Azerbaijani population, witnessed an 82.1% voter turnout, with a resounding 99.9% .9 voting for independence. The outcome was the establishment of the unrecognized Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. The conflict escalated into full-scale warfare in the late winter of 1992. Despite international mediation efforts involving various organizations, including the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, a peaceful resolution remained elusive. In the spring of 1993, Armenian forces expanded their control beyond the enclave, raising the specter of broader regional involvement. By the war's conclusion in 1994, Armenians had gained full control of most of the enclave and roughly 9% of Azerbaijani territory beyond the enclave. The war left a profound human toll, displacing as many as 230,000 Armenians from Azerbaijan and 800,000 Azerbaijanis from Armenia and Karabakh. This conflict effectively resulted in the ethnic cleansing of Armenia and Karabakh of Azerbaijanis and Azerbaijan of Armenians. A Russian-brokered ceasefire was eventually signed in May 1994, opening the door to diplomatic mediation. The First Nagorno-Karabakh War serves as a stark reminder of the complex issues surrounding territorial disputes, ethnic conflict, and the lasting impact of historical tensions. 
The conflict's legacy continues to shape the geopolitics of the South Caucasus region. Border clashes, 2008 to 2020, persistent tensions in Nagorno Karabakh. The region of Nagorno Karabakh remained ensnared in a cycle of violence and border clashes from 2008 to 2020, resulting in numerous casualties and continued unrest. These incidents followed the 1994 ceasefire that concluded the first Nagorno-Karabakh war but indicated that the underlying tensions and disputes remained far from resolved. The 2008 Mardikert clashes, which erupted on March 4, 2008, in the wake of the 2008 Armenian election protests, marked a significant escalation in hostilities. These clashes resulted in a considerable number of casualties and both sides declaring victory. This episode represented the most intense fighting between ethnic Armenian and Azerbaijani forces since the 1994 ceasefire following the first Nagorno-Karabakh War. The international community took notice, and on March 14, 2008, the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 62243, demanding the immediate withdrawal of all Armenian forces from the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. The year 2010 witnessed the Nagorno-Karabakh clash on February 18, a scattered exchange of gunfire on the line of contact dividing Azerbaijani and Karabakh Armenian military forces. The skirmish resulted in the loss of three Azerbaijani soldiers' lives and one wounded. In the same year, the Mardikert clashes turned out to be the deadliest for Armenian forces since the 2008 violence, with significant casualties on both sides. The following years continued to witness border clashes. In 2011, these skirmishes left three Nagorno-Karabakh soldiers dead. In 2012, tensions escalated further, resulting in the deaths of 19 Azerbaijani and 14 Armenian soldiers. In 2013, 12 Azerbaijani and 7 Armenian soldiers perished in border clashes. 2014 saw an increase in clashes with a total of 27 Azerbaijani soldiers and 27 Armenian soldiers killed. Six Armenian civilians also lost their lives during this period. The violence continued in 2015, with 42 Armenian soldiers and five civilians killed. Azerbaijani sources indicated the deaths of at least 64 Azerbaijani soldiers. During these years, Azerbaijan, buoyed by its oil and gas resources, significantly expanded its military capabilities, allocating substantial funds to its military endeavors. The most severe clashes since the 1994 ceasefire agreement occurred in early 2016, during the 2016 Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Heavy fighting between April 1 and 5, 2016, resulted in numerous casualties, with 88 Armenian and 31 to 92 Azerbaijani soldiers killed. In addition, 10 civilians, 6 Azerbaijani, and 4 Armenian, lost their lives. The clashes saw the downing of an Azerbaijani military helicopter and 13 unmanned drones, the destruction of an Azerbaijani tank, and the loss of 14 tanks by Nagorno-Karabakh. 2018 continued to witness clashes, with three civilian volunteers killed in a demoning operation in Nagorno-Karabakh on March 29, 2018. 2020 brought further skirmishes. With a notable intensification of hostilities in July, July 2020 Armenian, Azerbaijani clashes. The persistent border clashes underscore the unresolved tensions in Nagorno-Karabakh, which ultimately culminated in the 2020 war, illustrating the region's volatility and the need for a sustainable solution. Second Nagorno-Karabakh War, 2028 Devastating Conflict The Second Nagorno-Karabakh War, which erupted in 2020, stands as a devastating chapter in the long-standing conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the region of Nagorno-Karabakh. This war had far-reaching consequences, leading to significant loss of life and causing widespread destruction. Large-scale fighting ignited on the morning of September 27, 2020, as Azerbaijan launched an offensive along the established line of contact in the aftermath of the First Nagorno-Karabakh War. Intense clashes occurred in the less mountainous districts of southern Nagorno-Karabakh, marking a significant departure from the previous conflict. On the same day, Azerbaijan's parliament declared martial law and imposed curfews in several cities and regions following the clashes. Turkey's military support to Azerbaijan during this war played a crucial role, although the extent of this support remained a subject of dispute. The war was characterized by the use of modern warfare technologies, 
including drones, sensors, long-range heavy artillery, and missile strikes. Both sides engaged in state propaganda and leveraged official social media accounts for online information warfare. Azerbaijan's extensive use of drones was particularly significant in determining the outcome of the conflict. Amid the intensifying conflict, numerous countries in the United Nations strongly condemned the fighting, calling on both Armenia and Azerbaijan to de-escalate tensions and return to meaningful negotiations. Despite the efforts of Russia, France, and the United States, three ceasefires failed to halt the hostilities. The capture of Shusha, the second-largest city in Nagorno-Karabakh, marked a critical turning point. A ceasefire agreement was subsequently signed on November 10, 2020, ending all hostilities in the region. Following the war, an unconfirmed number of Armenian prisoners of war were held captive in Azerbaijan, with reports of mistreatment and charges filed against them. This led to a case at the International Court of Justice. Casualties during the war were significant, officially numbering in the low thousands. According to official figures from both sides, Armenia and Artsakh lost 3,825 troops, with 187 servicemen missing in action. Azerbaijan claimed 2,906 of its troops were killed, with six missing in action. Additionally, it was reported that 541 Syrian fighters or mercenaries fighting for Azerbaijan lost their lives. However, both sides were criticized for downplaying their own casualties and exaggerating the numbers of enemy casualties and injuries. The conflict also took a severe toll on civilians, with at least 185 reported civilian fatalities on both sides. The whereabouts of 21 Armenian civilians remain unknown. Civilian areas, including major cities, bore the brunt of the violence. Significant damage was inflicted on cities such as Stepanakert, Martyuni, Martikert, Shushi in the Republic of Artsakh, and Ganja, Barda, and Tartar in Azerbaijan, resulting in the destruction of numerous buildings and homes. The Second Nagorno-Karabakh War stands as a tragic episode in the enduring conflict, underlining the urgent need for a peaceful and lasting resolution to this protracted dispute. Armenia, Azerbaijan Border Crisis, 2021, present an ongoing challenge. An ongoing border crisis between Armenia and Azerbaijan began on May 12, 2021, significantly escalating tensions in the region. Azerbaijani soldiers crossed several kilometers into Armenia, specifically in the provinces of Syunik and Gegerkunik, occupying a substantial territory estimated between 50 and 215 square kilometers. Regrettably, Azerbaijan has not withdrawn its troops from internationally recognized Armenian territory despite calls to do so by prominent international entities, including the European Parliament, the United States, and France. Two of the three co-chairs of the OSCE Minsk Group, which has been involved in mediating the conflict. This crisis emerged following the end of the Second Nagorno-Karabakh War, with Azerbaijan making numerous incursions into Armenian territory. The ceasefire agreement was frequently violated, provoking cross-border confrontations with Armenia. To bolster the border against Azerbaijan's military incursions, Armenia allocated additional defense areas to the border guards of the Russian Federal Security Service. The crisis witnessed escalations in July 2021, with clashes occurring on the Armenia, Nakhchivan border, and in November 2021 in the Gegerkunik, Kalbajar area. In August 2021, Azerbaijani forces blockaded southern Armenia, Syunik, by closing the main north south highway interrupting all international transit with Iran. This forced Armenia to develop alternative roads to maintain connectivity. In response to these developments, the European Union, EU, sent a CSDP Common Security and Defense Policy civilian monitoring mission to Armenia, aimed at contributing to stability along the border and deterring offensives by Azerbaijan. Meanwhile, President Ilham Aliyev of Azerbaijan made numerous threats to Armenia insisting that Armenia must accept certain conditions to live comfortably in the area. The most significant escalation occurred in September 2022, when Azerbaijan initiated its largest attack on the Republic of Armenia in the history of the conflict between the two countries. These offensives have resulted in the militarization of Armenia's borders with Azerbaijan, significantly disrupting the lives of residents in border communities. Many residents have been targeted, preventing them from accessing farmlands, schools, 
water resources, relatives, or religious sites. Fearful for their safety, a considerable number of Armenian villagers have relocated permanently. Armenia has sought intervention from the Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSTU, and Russia independently due to Azerbaijan's military incursions in May 2021 and September 2022. However, the CSTU and Russia declined to provide assistance on both occasions. This ongoing crisis remains a pressing concern with potential consequences for regional stability and the well-being of affected communities. Blockade of the Republic of Artsakh, 2022, present a dire humanitarian crisis. Since December 12, 2022, Azerbaijan has been imposing an illegal blockade of the Republic of Artsakh under the pretext of environmental protests. This blockade remains in effect to this day. The Azerbaijani government deployed individuals claiming to be eco-activists to obstruct the Lakin Corridor, which is the sole road connecting Artsakh to Armenia and the outside world. It's important to note that among these so-called eco-activists were civil servants, disguised military personnel, members of pro-government NGOs, and youth organizations. Starting on March 26, 2023, the Azerbaijani government further intensified the blockade. They seized strategic ground around the Lakin Corridor, both within Artsakh and Armenia. Additionally, they established a military outpost to block a bypass dirt road that had previously provided relief to the region. They also obstructed the old section of the Lakin Corridor and installed a checkpoint at the new section. Azerbaijan's actions have been in defiance of calls from Russian peacekeepers to observe the 2020 ceasefire conditions and return to their initial territorial positions. Moreover, Azerbaijan has ignored appeals from the International Court of Justice, the European Court of Human Rights, and other human rights organizations to restore freedom of movement across the Lakin Corridor. This blockade has had severe consequences for the population in Artsakh. Importation of food, fuel, and medicine is blocked, causing a humanitarian crisis for the approximately 120,000 residents of the region. There are widespread shortages of food, medicine, and electricity, with emergency reserves being rationed. The blockade has also led to massive unemployment and school closures, further aggravating the crisis. Azerbaijan has deliberately damaged or cut critical civilian infrastructure that supplies Artsakh, including gas, electricity, and the internet. The region has been without gas since March 22, 2023 and Artsakh authorities have resorted to daily six-hour blackouts to ration the limited local electricity production. Notably, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev has explicitly stated that Armenians living in Karabakh must either accept Azerbaijani citizenship or look for another place to live. He has even threatened military action if the Artsakh government does not disband. Local Armenian residents are deeply concerned that the blockade is part of an effort to expel them from their homeland. Several human rights organizations and scholars specializing in genocide studies have warned of genocide risk factors in this crisis. 2023 Azerbaijani Offensive in Nagorno-Karabakh A Renewed Escalation On September 19, 2023, Azerbaijan launched a military offensive on Nagorno-Karabakh, marking a significant escalation in the ongoing conflict. Just one day after the offensive began, on September 20, an agreement to establish a complete cessation of hostilities in Nagorno-Karabakh was reached under the mediation of the Russian Peacekeeping Command in the region. Subsequently, Azerbaijan held a meeting with representatives of the Artsakh Armenian community on September 21st in Yevlik, and another meeting is planned for the following month. Despite these diplomatic efforts, ceasefire violations by Azerbaijan were reported by both Artsakh and local residents in Stepanakert on September 21st. This renewed offensive further complicates the already dire situation in the region, underscoring the need for a peaceful and lasting resolution to the conflict. Fatalities in the Nagorno-Karabakh Conflict, 1988, Present a Tragic Chronology, 1988 to 1994. Estimated 28,000 to 38,000 people lost their lives between 1988 and 1994. Armenian military fatalities were between 5,856 and 6,000, with 1,264 Armenian civilians also killed. Azerbaijani military deaths were 11,557 according to Azerbaijan, 
while Western and Russian estimates were 25,000 to 30,000 combatants. For 1,210 Azerbaijani soldiers and 749 civilians were missing. The total number of Azerbaijani civilians killed is unknown, but between 167 to 763 were killed on one day in 1992. 1994 to 2019. While no precise casualty figures are available, approximately 3,000 people, primarily soldiers, were killed between 1994 and 2009. 2014 was the deadliest year since the war had ended, with 72 deaths. In April 2016, heavy fighting left 91 Armenian and 94 Azerbaijani soldiers dead, along with 15 civilians. Azerbaijan stated 398 of its soldiers and 31 civilians were killed between 1994 and September 2020. 2020. The two-month fighting in 2020 resulted in thousands of deaths, primarily soldiers, and nearly 200 civilians. Azerbaijani figures indicate 2,906 soldiers and 100 civilians were killed. Armenian authorities reported 3,825 soldiers and 85 civilians dead. 541 Syrian mercenaries fighting for Azerbaijan were documented. Tragic incidents included the accidental killing of two Russian soldiers and a 13-year-old Russian citizen during an Armenian missile strike. 2021. Present. In 2021, there were 12 Azerbaijani civilian and two soldier fatalities due to landmine explosions. Additionally, 17 Armenian and 10 Azerbaijani soldiers were killed in shootouts at the border area. 38 Armenian soldiers were captured and later released. 2022 In 2022, three Armenian soldiers were killed, and 14 were wounded in an attack by Azerbaijani drones in Nagorno-Karabakh on March 25. The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has resulted in a devastating loss of life over the years, with the toll affecting soldiers, civilians, and even foreign nationals. It underscores the urgency of seeking a peaceful resolution to this long-standing conflict to prevent further tragedy and suffering. Foreign Involvement in the Nagorno-Karabakh Conflict Russia Russia officially takes a neutral stance and has positioned itself as a mediator in the conflict. During the first Nagorno-Karabakh War, Russia was seen as favoring Armenia by providing military assistance, including arms and indirect logistical support. Russia supplied around $1 billion worth of weapons to Armenia, which played a significant role in Armenia's victory. Despite its support for Armenia, Russia also provided some assistance to Azerbaijan. Up until 2022, Russia was Armenia's primary arms supplier, and the two countries shared a military alliance. In 2022, a significant development occurred when Azerbaijani President Aliyev and Russian President Putin signed a declaration of allied interaction. This agreement bolstered military ties between Russia and Azerbaijan and emphasized mutual respect for territorial integrity. Turkey Turkey has been a staunch supporter of Azerbaijan throughout the conflict. During the war, Turkey provided active military assistance to Azerbaijan. Diplomatically, Turkey consistently backed Azerbaijan's position. Turkish and Azerbaijani armed forces have collaborated extensively, often conducting joint military exercises. Azerbaijan has also procured weapons from Turkey. Turkey has kept its border with Armenia closed since April 1993, in solidarity with Azerbaijan. The Shusha Declaration signed by Turkey and Azerbaijan reaffirmed their military and economic cooperation. Iran. Iran officially maintains a neutral position and attempts to act as a mediator. Iranian officials have consistently emphasized their support for Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. During the conflict, Iran faced internal debates on its policy, but it effectively combined official neutrality with growing economic support for Armenia. Iran's support for Armenia largely involved economic cooperation, such as providing electricity and goods. Iran has, at times, been viewed as a geopolitical counterweight to Turkey in the region. United States The U.S. has maintained a complex policy throughout the conflict, reflecting the influence of different branches of government. Congress passed Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act in 1992, which banned any assistance to Azerbaijan. However, it was effectively amended in 2001 and waived by President George W. Bush from 2002 onwards. 
U.S. military aid has been provided to both Armenia and Azerbaijan, with the focus shifting over the years. The Trump administration significantly increased military aid to Azerbaijan. Arms Suppliers The OSCE called for an arms embargo in the Nagorno-Karabakh region in 1992, but it has been a voluntary and non-enforced measure. Russia has been Armenia's primary arms supplier for a long time. Other countries that have supplied Armenia with arms include China, India, Ukraine, Greece, Serbia, and others. Israel has become a major supplier of arms to Azerbaijan, accounting for a significant portion of its weapons imports. Azerbaijan has also received arms from Turkey, Belarus, Canada via Turkey, Ukraine, Serbia, and the Czech Republic. This summary provides a more detailed overview of the foreign involvement in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. If you have specific questions or need more information on any of these points, please feel free to ask. Foreign Fighters During the intense period of fighting in 1992-94, both Armenia and Azerbaijan used foreign mercenaries and fighters. Azerbaijan made extensive use of mercenary pilots with many experts believing that most of the country's air force was operated by mercenaries. Foreign groups that fought on the Azerbaijani side included Chechen militants, Afghan Mujahideen, members of the Turkish nationalist Grey Wolves, and the Ukrainian nationalist and neo-fascist Union Esso. Chechen fighters led by Shamil Basayev played a significant role in the war, notably in the Battle of Shushan 1992. Azerbaijani authorities denied the recruitment of Afghan Mujahideen, who numbered between 1,000 and 3,000. On the Armenian side, foreign fighters included around 85 Russian Kuban Cossacks and about 30 Ossetian volunteers from both South Ossetia, Georgia, and North Ossetia, Russia. Diaspora Armenian volunteers and former members of the Armenian Secret Army for the Liberation of Armenia, Asala, also participated in the conflict. Diplomatic Support Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, received diplomatic recognition and support from partially recognized states like Abkhazia, South Ossetia, and Transnistria, particularly during the 2016 clashes. Greece adopted a pro-Armenian position during the conflict and supported Armenia in international forums. Cyprus condemned Azerbaijan for violating the ceasefire during the April 2016 and July 2020 clashes. France and Russia were considered Armenia's key allies during the conflict. French Ambassador Jean-Bernard Merimé played a role in changing the wording of a UN Security Council resolution to be more favorable to Armenia. Azerbaijan received diplomatic support, especially for its territorial integrity, from Turkey, Pakistan, and northern Cyprus. Organizations like the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, and the Turkic Council supported the Azerbaijani position with some member states expressing their support independently. Three post-Soviet states with territorial disputes, namely Ukraine, Georgia, and Moldova, supported Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. Serbia, despite its territorial dispute over Kosovo, also explicitly supported Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. Two other post-Soviet states, Kazakhstan and Belarus, tacitly supported Azerbaijan's position within the Eurasian Economic Union EU and the Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSDO. Both Palestine and Israel voiced support for Azerbaijan. In 2008, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution reaffirming Azerbaijan's territorial integrity, which was supported mostly by Muslim states and seven OSCE members. It was opposed by Armenia, France, India, Russia, the United States, and Vanuatu. This expanded summary provides more context and details regarding foreign fighters and diplomatic support in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. If you have any specific questions or need further information on any of these points, please feel free to ask. The Azerbaijani Laundromat In 2017, a significant money laundering scheme known as the Azerbaijani Laundromat was exposed, revealing a complex operation orchestrated by Azerbaijan. This scheme spanned from 2012 to 2014 and involved the creation of a slush fund amounting to 2.9 billion U.S. dollars. The primary purpose of this fund was to facilitate the bribery of numerous European and American politicians, journalists, lawmakers, and academics to advance Azerbaijani interests globally. 
These interests included promoting a pro-Azerbaijan stance regarding the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, often referred to as caviar diplomacy. Key aspects of this money laundering scheme included Financial transactions Millions of euros were transferred into the private bank accounts of influential Western figures who were amenable to supporting Azerbaijani interests. These funds were used as bribes. Luxurious trips Alongside monetary incentives, influential individuals were treated to extravagant trips to Azerbaijan, further influencing their perspective on Azerbaijani affairs. European Azerbaijani Society Tease the European Azerbaijani Society played a significant role in orchestrating this operation. It hired European public relations professionals, parliament members, and former ministers to facilitate the campaign. Adil Bagarov's role Azerbaijani American businessman Adil Bagarov was actively involved in lobbying for Azerbaijani interests in Washington, D.C. He received secret funding from Azerbaijan State Oil Company. Bagarov ran the nonprofit organization U.S. Azeris Network, which received substantial funds, particularly after hosting a conference in Baku attended by 10 American members of Congress. Congressional Azerbaijan Caucus Bagarov had significant influence in the formation and activities of the Congressional Azerbaijan Caucus. This congressional group was established by two congressmen, Kurt Weldon and Solomon Ortiz, in 2004. Azerbaijani laundromat funds were frequently channeled to this caucus. Influence over aid budgets Bagarov held advisory roles in Washington and played a role in influencing economic and military aid budgets for both Azerbaijan and Armenia. Over time, his lobbying efforts shifted from advocating for increased aid to Azerbaijan to pushing for the reduction of aid to Armenia while securing substantial financial support for Azerbaijan. German politician Eduard Lintner German politician Eduard Lintner was implicated in the laundromat scandal. He founded the Society for Promoting German-Azerbaijani Relations in 2009, which was funded by the Azerbaijani government. This organization actively lobbied for Azerbaijan in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Additionally, in 2012, the laundromat investigation unveiled bank transfers totaling over 9 million U.S. dollars to the Hungarian MKB bank account in Budapest. These transactions occurred around the time when the Hungarian government extradited the convicted Azerbaijani murderer Ramil Safarov to Azerbaijan. This raised suspicions of a connection between Viktor Orban's visit to Baku and these transactions. In January 2017, following critical reports and concerns expressed by members of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe PACE, an independent external body was established to investigate allegations of corruption within PACE. The investigation revealed strong suspicions of corrupt conduct involving some members of the Assembly, leading to sanctions against several members who had breached the Assembly's Code of Conduct. These actions included the expulsion of some members from the Assembly's premises for life. The Azerbaijani laundromat was a complex and extensive operation aimed at influencing international figures and organizations to promote Azerbaijani interests, particularly regarding the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. It involved bribery, lobbying, and financial manipulation on a significant scale. Major ceasefire agreements and international mediation in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has witnessed several ceasefire agreements, international mediation efforts, and diplomatic developments aimed at resolving the long-standing dispute. Here is an overview and expansion of some key agreements and mediating parties. 1. Bishkek Protocol, 1994 A Russian-brokered ceasefire agreement was signed in May 1994, marking the end of the First Nagorno-Karabakh War. The OSCE Minsk Group, consisting of Russia, the United States, and France, played a mediating role alongside Russia. The Bishkek Protocol called for the cessation of hostilities, demilitarization of the region, the return of refugees, and the establishment of a Commonwealth of Independent States, CS, peacekeeping force. 2. Accusations of Bias Azerbaijan has periodically accused the OSCE Minsk Group, especially Russia, the United States, and France, of showing a pro-Armenian bias in their mediation efforts. This perceived bias led to requests for the reconsideration of France's co-chairmanship of the OSCE Minsk Group in 1996. Concerns of bias have persisted in the years that followed. 3. 
2020 ceasefire agreement. On November 9, 2020, Armenia and Azerbaijan signed a ceasefire agreement mediated by Russia. The Republic of Artsakh also agreed to end hostilities. The agreement stipulated that both sides would maintain control over the positions they held at midnight. Armenia returned territories surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh that it had occupied since the 1990s. Azerbaijan retained control over one-third of Nagorno-Karabakh, including key areas like Shusha and Hadrat. The Armenian side suffered substantial territorial losses, comprising roughly 75% of the areas it previously controlled in and around Nagorno-Karabakh. 4. Russian Peacekeepers As part of the 2020 ceasefire agreement, around 2,000 Russian peacekeeping troops were deployed around Nagorno-Karabakh, with a mandate extending for at least five years. These peacekeepers also oversaw the Lakin Corridor, which remained the sole passage between Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. The agreement allowed for a temporary but renewable Russian peacekeeping presence. 5. Increased Presence of Russia in the European Union Following the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh War, both Russia and the European Union EU increased their presence along the Armenia-Azerbaijan border to enhance border stability and deter potential offensives. Russia's Federal Security Service expanded its patrols in Armenia, and the EU established a civilian monitoring mission. While these efforts helped prevent full-scale warfare, they did not entirely deter Azerbaijan's objectives. 6. Criticism of each other's presence Both Russia and the EU criticized each other's presence in Armenia. The EU encouraged Armenia to explore alternative security alliances due to concerns over Russia's security guarantees. Russia criticized the EU and Armenia, alleging that Western civilian monitoring efforts aim to diminish Russian influence in the region. 7. 2023 Ceasefire Agreement Following the resumption of hostilities in 2023, a ceasefire agreement was reached. The government of the Republic of Artsakh agreed to disarm and entered into talks with the government of Azerbaijan regarding the reintegration of the territory. These ceasefire agreements and mediation efforts have marked significant milestones in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict's complex history, reflecting the ongoing challenges and diplomatic complexities of the region. The political status of Nagorno-Karabakh, a region in the South Caucasus, has been in limbo since its declaration of independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. During the Soviet era, it was an autonomous oblast within the Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic. Despite various peace initiatives and dialogue proposals from international bodies, including the United Nations Security Council and the OSCE Minsk Group, the issue remains unresolved. The Republic of Artsakh, as it is known, has not received recognition from any country, including Armenia. Nonetheless, the principle of self-determination for the local Armenian population is emphasized by international mediators and human rights organizations not only as a universally recognized right, but also as a means of preventing genocide. In the aftermath of the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh War, Azerbaijan withdrew its offer of special status or autonomy for its ethnic Armenian inhabitants and now seeks their integration into Azerbaijan. Azerbaijani President Aliyev has made it clear that the previously proposed status for Armenians is no longer on the table. Despite being offered Azerbaijani citizenship, Artsakh residents are skeptical of Azerbaijan's commitment to their security due to concerns about human rights abuses, armenophobia, and the lack of rights for ethnic minorities. Many international observers, scholars, and politicians warn of the risk of ethnic cleansing and potential genocide. Given the ongoing blockade of Artsakh, it is challenging to envision the civil integration of its Armenian population into an undemocratic Azerbaijani government. The situation is seen as a matter of great concern in the region, with fears of arbitrary detentions and mistreatment of civilians should Azerbaijan gain control over the area.